I really want to tell you that I'm an alien. And I took over 15 planets and this is my 16th. I, took, I speak 50 interstellar languages, but I'm not. One moment, please. I am Evgeny Buryatsky, and I started my career as an industrial designer, uh, working around the world in design studios, and at some point I switched to development of digital products. But this is not the theme of today's talk. I do design spaceships, and this is me 33 years ago, and I was born in some distant place on this planet Earth, and the place is lay close to China and Mongolia. This is Buryatia. This is where my name coming from. The area is very vivid. There are shamans walking with tambourine, playing tunes and praying to gods, and there is Buddhist monks that are living in that sands. And the most inspiring thing about this place is sky. Under, like, if you, if you look directly above your head at this place, you see Ursula Major constellation. Beautiful, beautiful constellation. I lived in a density city, and this is my house. I were climbing to this house rooftop and watching to the sky. I was dreaming about having a spaceship. The spaceship which actually located somewhere close to the Earth, but it's invisible to others. It's self-sustainable and beautiful. This is me, Buryatsky, 15 years old. <clears throat> Another thought I had, it was also how fast and how far I can travel with my spaceship. And outlining my childish thoughts, it was something like this. Standing will take me nowhere. Crawling, maybe to other room. Walking out of building. Running, it's, a, it's very exhausting, but it will take me around the building. Biking to the next block, driving around the city. Training, which derives from train, will take me to Moscow. Beautiful city. Flying, it's really cool. It will take me to another country. Spaceshipping will take me to another planet and teleportation instantly to somewhere else. Talking about teleportation, I don't know if it's possible at all, but let's assume yes. I think it's not a very stable thing. Teleportation is problematic due to large chunks of data that have to be transferred, uh, transferred in instant to somewhere else. There are many chances to miss failure and you can find yourself something like this at the other end. Yes, just by chance, you can find yourself like this, creepy. Then the question, what is the best and most optimal way to travel? And it's space shipping using spacecrafts. Why? Very easy, it's cool, it's reliable, it's fast, and you don't have to change your tires every season. Convenient. So let's take a look to the spaceships, what we have nowadays, how we do space shipping. Pretty obvious way, rockets. It's vertical takeoff, interesting solution, but there is another option. To take off with the shuttle which carries your, uh, with the carrier which, take, uh, which carries your shuttle and releases you at specific altitude. And 
this thing was recently discarded and I understand why. And looking to the space, there is um, a modules, right, where, which are docking and to my opinion, those things looks like a large pile of metal scrap. Not sexy at all. And looking at this sandwich wrap, uh, sorry, capsule, which carries human flesh through the space, makes me think that designer was so embarrassed that he wrapped this thing with some textile. There are, have to be solutions about the spaceship's design. And there are, not like there are a lot of them. And we see them in movies and we see them in games. But you say it's not realistic. Of course it's not. We, we want some reality. And there are few things I found which are looks good. And one of the examples is a Spaceship One from Scaled Composites. It's a pretty interesting piece of technology which flies to the space. It looks good also. Spaceship Two from Virgin Galactic. I'm sorry for the loss. They lost one ship recently. And this is the spaceship which you actually want to travel to, to the space. It's, it's beautiful and it, it's, it's amazing. And you remember that wrap, rapid sandwich thing? This is the capsule. This is capsule from SpaceX. It's nice. And most amazing thing about it, about it, it is interior. Wow. It looks modern. Look, there is no tumblers with a lot of buttons. There is no much weight. There are touch screens and there are seven places you can fly to the space. Modern, cool, I like it. So the question is, if you ever wondered why the recent spaceships are better than the first ones I showed you recently? Because of the design. And while the research, I figured out that NASA doesn't have design department. What a shame. Big loss. So I wrote them a letter and I outlined my thoughts and I told them that my dreams of designing a real space tools accompanied me through all my life and I have gathered plenty of sketches. And until today I'm waiting for an answer. So I thought if Elon and Richard from SpaceX and uh, Virgin Galactic is doing it, I can do it too. Why not? So today I'm here to present you my BS spacecraft series project. First, BS Barracuda. So I'm searching something cool, which looks and feels nicely. I try to tackle tech. And in this specific machine, I tried to solve um, an energy problem. And particle friction, uh, this is the solution which I gather from energy and reuse it for propulsion. In this uh, spacecraft, Titan, I tried to make something modern and new and fresh style for spaceships. In BSLA 763, I tried to, um, to solve a surfaces problem and I found a solution. It is zero thickness, no weight surface which is generated by magnetic field tension, like in the tail in the middle of the spacecraft. <clears throat> another, qu another question I'm trying to solve is materials and of course for that I have also a solution and this is self-healing nanofiber materials. Cool, right? In Tarantula, there is no mechanical joints. They use magnet, magnets, basically. With magnets, you can uh, manipulate your wings and basically steer your vessel. Uh, next version of Tarantula, I work it on modularity and modularity of the cockpit. So you can place our pilot inside or interchange it to with uh, artificial intelligence block. And this is the most exciting thing. I'm trying to solve propulsion also. This technology 
uses space matter, where a spacecraft collects space matter, compresses it, and then prints out in a very fast way. It's like a rapid prototyping printer, but very fast, very, very fast. This yellow trail is actually space matter, which when it cools down, it dissolves in space. And it stands in the concept of cradle to cradle. And of course you say all my tech is bullshit. And I totally agree with you. But you know what guys? Bullshitting works and it has even fancy name. Science fiction. Great example to that will be Hooverboard. You know this movie? Back to the Future 2. And the most amazing thing that this movie were created by artists, which inspired scientists. And at some point, there are product coming out, which is from Hendo, and this is Hooverboard. This is a pretty awesome thing. They just recently kickstarted it for 10K. You can have a Hooverboard for 10K dollars. So the topic here, the artists inspire scientists. And I'm trying to do it too. So outlining actually this thing is I would say that bullshitting is something that works and, so, um, and Hooverboard actually bullshits its way through the history and it will be, it will be solved at some day, of course. We will have, every, every one of us will have a Hooverboard. So I tried to inspire also people and uh, Vincent started to create a poly race game uh, which uses one of uh, or few of my spacecrafts there and this is the game pretty nice thing so in my creations I address speed right because it's a spaceship have to be fast and I also search for a form which like in automotive design desirable and and and, and speedy same as I'm searching for realism in my artworks, like in this spacecraft where every detail is worked very carefully. I also search for a concept fit and if a, spa if a spacecraft um, stays without environment, it's not life. In this case, a uh, priest lives on a sandy or in a deserty uh, planet and that's why it's always like scratched the bit and, and overused. And I'm searching for a breakthrough in spaceship design. I disassemble spaceships and I assemble them, them back again. I do design asymmetric spaceships. Oh, wow. And who told you that actually you need a symmetry in a space? So, in overall, I'm searching for an amazement uh, where people say, wow, this is a cool thing, how parts are connected. And this technology is killer tech. It also, um, so explaining it, it's, it's basically a very simple theory behind it, where are several objects magnetized to each other, but it's not magnetic fields. It is love. <laughs> yes. It's, it's the killer tech where are um, instances are um, uh, try to be together on some reason. So this is Ola. She's sitting there. She's my inspiration and fuel. So the question is now, how do I design these things? I'm starting from collecting, collecting inspirations. And <clears throat> I go to Concept Ship blog where I search for vessel designs and inspirations like this one from Scott Robertson, very good artist. Then I go to car body design because the next thing after private car is a private spaceship. And believe me or not, we will have to have spaceship designers. I will be the first. <laughs> so draw crowd, from there I'm searching techniques and styles, pretty cool source to gather and learn about the um, creative processes. 
I follow also NASA Goddard on Flickr. Uh, they inspire me for themes and environments. I also look for realistic things like this um, magazine, it's offline magazine, and I'm searching for tiny details in these magazines and try to implement it to my artworks. I also look to Deviant Art. I know this resource may be crappy, but there are many gems, like this one from Talros. So on Deviant Art, I have an account which is more than 12 years, and there I collect critiques and feedbacks. This is the most inspiring thing for me as an artist. I also go to Pinterest and try to find compositions and colors which inspire for, um, for artworks. After all these inspirations, I have to process it. And I set up my playground. This is my regular tools I'm using, so MacBook Air, Wacom, and um, Moleskine sketchbook. And I try to outline my designs. I try to make as many sketches as possible because in this case, if you have made 100 spaceships and one of them will be good. It's about kilometers. So while sketching what I'm concentrating on, I'm concentrating on searching surfaces, making spaceship clear and less detailed and then I'm searching for chances in it. So some happy accidents. After this thing, I do take one of the spaceships to the rendering process, to the Photoshop. And Photoshopping, it's going this way. So I make a photo, I scan it, I clean up background, I over sketch it so it will look more clean and then I clean up surfaces. And then I redraw the parting lines and details. I add background and playing a little bit with colors. It's also important. After creating like 20, 30 spaceships in Photoshop, I taking them to 3D. It's happening very rare and this is one of the things which I want to show you today. This is BSLA model in 3D. It's animation. This is a drone, by the way. So, what I'm talking about here is empty slide. So, what I'm talking about here is uh, about my passion and about my love to creation. And um, uh, saying that, guys, bullshitting works. And if you bullshit yourself through the history and then it happens as reality, this is the way to do it. Um, thank you very much for the for your time, and um, yes. <laughs>